everyone. This is Charles Hoskinson broadcasting pre-recorded in warm, sunny Colorado. Always warm, always sunny, sometimes Colorado. Today, we're going to talk about the Oracle special. Oh, yeah. Okay. There's actually a master plan and it's coming together gradually. <laughs> I'll put a little, put a little asterisk here. Okay. So what is the Oracle master plan? So smart contracts are super duper cool. Basically, they're these little programs that run on a blockchain. They connect to transactions and other such things. You activate them to do interesting things. You can do like escrow contracts with them. You can build dApps from them. You can build whole DeFi platforms. Uh, you can build stable coins and you can build DEXs and so forth. Unfortunately, smart contracts are basically blind. They can't see the outside world, okay? So you need some mechanism that's going to allow you to inject state from the outside world, information from the outside world into a smart contract, okay? So where does that come from? It could be something as simple as, what is the value of ADA to USD? If you have a DEX or a stable coin or any of these other things, the network needs to be aware either by a, some mechanism where we, the users, inject it or some trusted source injects it, uh, that the system is uh, what the price is. Yeah, it can be events like who won the Super Bowl. It can be events like who won the World Cup. It can be who won the election. Was it Trump or Biden? Uh, these types of things. It could be how many people have been vaccinated for coronavirus, okay? So whether you're writing a gambling contract, you're writing a DeFi application, whether you're writing anything uh, that touches the real world, estate planning contracts, uh, Aunt Jane has died uh, and now unlock the contract so that the inheritance can be given or the Bitcoin can be transferred from uh, Aunt Jane's account to her survivors, these types of things. You need some way of injecting that into the blockchain. So smart contracts can operate on that. And generally speaking, we call that an oracle, okay? S something that provides information the network itself cannot verify. So what we've been doing is we've been slowly but surely building partnerships and capabilities. And today, let's talk about three of them. So we have the SPOs, we have SingularityNet, and we have Wolfram. Okay. And these are all interconnected in a very subtle way. So first off, you have to have an access point for smart contracts to get Oracle information. And what's nice about the stake pool operators is they run infrastructure for a business. They preserve the state of the chain, they advance it. Uh, they're responsible for building uh, the blockchain of Cardano. And they're public figures are registered on chain. You know a lot about them, they're very reliable. So. This is a very natural set for us to start building out APIs and infrastructure so that your smart contracts can talk to data feeds that are hosted, aggregated, federated through the SPO population. And Emergo has been doing some great work with its partners and beta testing all kinds of cool things uh, with this setup. And I think the SPOs are a very natural set. But then you also need to operate on that data and you need a source okay the power and magic of singularity net and the power of magic of ai is that you can do all kinds of really really cool things with that platform with the agents of that platform uh, that will enable you to verify uh, veracity and uh, mine uh, interesting statistics and so forth and wolfram has a language named Wolfram and one of the largest sets of data in the world to operate on, okay? Uh, and they have deals with Siri, they have deals with Alexa, they have deals uh, all across the entire space. I think they work with Google. There's not a single Fortune 500 that doesn't talk to the Wolfram platform. And they have this amazing programming language which allows you to compute on the data, okay? so. Basically, the idea here is that oracles are only as good as the source and availability and computability of the information, okay? So you need the info itself, 
you have a notion of veracity. So the truthiness of the data. You also have an availability issue. Okay. And you also need completeness. So you have all the info that you want. It's there when you want it. And there's some way of determining that that looks good. Then layer two, you need the ability to access it. Okay. And so even if it's available from the source, you have to get it into the Cardano network itself and the SPOs, they provide that. Okay. Then after that, you have to be able to compute on it, compute it. And this is where Wolfram, their programming language, and this is where SingularityNet are two incredibly powerful tools that will allow you, while you're writing your smart contracts, to write custom domain-specific queries to be able to do all kinds of computations on that. And this entire flow can be done in a uh, uniform way, okay? Because at the end of the day, you have the smart contract living here. Now, when we talk about the source of the info, that doesn't have to be a central database. That can be the SPOs, that can be a trusted server, that can be a federation of actors, that can be Chainlink, okay? There are many different sources. So this is kind of the first stage in the great Oracle pipeline is determining a source. And then you basically from that will have an opinion about the veracity of the information, how true it is, how reliable it is. You'll have an opinion about, is this going to be available 24 seven when I need it, where I need it? Also, is there everything there or do I have to stitch it together? Okay. The access control, there's a very natural regulating mechanism for that the SPOs, and then you need bespoke capabilities to compute on that data so you can get it into a format, that data, uh, into a format your smart contracts can understand and operate on and be able to uh, find useful. So what we're doing is we're building capabilities and partnerships. Uh, so we're gonna build some infrastructure for the SPOs, and basically this is the Oracle access layer. Okay, and that will make it very easy for the SPOs to provide interfaces for smart contracts to operate on. We'll make sure that that Oracle access layer is able to take queries that are written with AGI, uh, so Singularity Net, and take queries that are written with the Wolfram programming language. And if you are querying from Wolfram, and then using this on the other side, it can plug into different data sources. The very first data source is going to be the Wolfram data source because that's enormously complete. Uh, you, for example, can ask questions like, how many shipwrecks have happened uh, around the coasts of Florida from 1950 to 2000 uh, that lost more than $100 million worth of cargo in the months of August to September? And draw a map of it showing the frequency by uh, a picture and it actually be able to return a query. It's absolutely extraordinary what Wolfram has. But then we believe in choice, so you should be able to use other sources as well with this generic framework. So anyway, the plan in 2021 is to construct this Oracle access layer, allow a rich Oracle query experience. So we'll kind of call this uh, a common Oracle query language so that you can... Uh, Uh, so you can uh, go ahead and uh, send interesting messages there, and then we'll make it quite uniform an interface so that uh, people can plug different data sources in, whether it be a different cryptocurrency, it be uh, Wolfram and so forth. Uh, that's basically what we're looking for, okay? Now, what's the goal here? The goal is to put you, the developer, in charge of your oracles. And what you can do with your application is you'll have a very easy turnkey way of being able to query what you need, operate on what you need, and have certainty that what you need 
has veracity, it's right, uh, that it's going to be there when the contract needs it and you have as much as you need. Okay? And make it very uniform and easy for you to add multiple sources and weight those sources accordingly. So this is a 2021 project, and it's something that uh, we've been gradually building partners around. We first announced SingularityNet. We also then announced Wolfram. We'll keep announcing it. Amergo is doing some great work as well. It's just a matter of pulling all these pieces together. But this is one of the core pieces of DeFi that we think is really, really important. And it requires us to build different things. It requires us to build kind of an interface here to make it uniform for data to aggregate and send information in. That's kind of a standard. Uh, we need to build an access layer that the stake pool operators can run. And then we need to build a, a common Oracle query language interface so that your smart contracts can then talk to uh, basically these backends. And you can embed Wolfram code and embed uh, inter, uh, the uh, code required to talk to SingularityNet and these other things. And you can have very, very rich queries with these things. But all in all, we're just a brick in the wall. All in all, everything looks pretty good. Uh, it's uh, not super hard to put all this together. Oracles are much more evolved in 2020 and upcoming 2021 than they were just a few years ago. And there's a lot of great market standards. And we believe in choice here. And so uh, our goal is to build an interface and framework that makes it very easy to plug these things in. And then you can create your own Oracle services. External Oracle services like Chainlink can plug into it. Uh, and uh, services that are data aggregators and, and that give you the great compute uh, ability like Wolfram can plug in. Uh, and uh, other services like SingularityNet can plug in. And then ultimately you can get uh, a really, really rich experience as a developer. And you as a developer will not have to implement your own Oracle solution. Uh, you can just use this interface and it's there. It creates a little bit of a revenue stream for the SPOs because they can get some of the transaction fees for the querying. So it gives them an incentive to operate the Oracle access layer. Uh, and it uh, also means that there's a lot of standardization that can occur as things flow through. So it always gets into the right format when it hits your smart contract. And then eventually we can put over the years more sophisticated routing. So if one source goes down, you can actually automatically have backup sources so that you have much stronger availability. And then you can also add layers of verification in between. So our hope is with this Oracle access layer uh, that in addition to just providing access to the data, that the oracles can augment things like completeness or veracity as well. And you can pay on an, uh, kind of an a la carte basis of how many layers of assurance and checks and balances you want to have for your smart contract. There's only so much that Cardano can do because Cardano can only know things for certain that are within the network. Like, for example, it'll know that a certain transaction happened at a certain block at a certain time. That's something we have absolute faith in. It does not require trust. The minute that you're injecting information into the system, ultimately, uh, you have to trust that information somehow. And so you have to build veracity. You have to build layers of assurance of that data and based upon the value at risk. And so that's the point of the developer. And what we want to do is create a common path for the developer to be able to uh, get that level of assurance that they need and the users of their products to have that assurance that they need as well. OK, so this is the very brief Oracle special. Uh, we've been slowly building out uh, kind of a war map for how we're going to deal with Oracles in 2021. It's very exciting. Uh, and it's just so cool to have great partners like SingularityNet and uh, Wolfram. They've been around for a long time. They've been doing this for a long time. And it's going to be cool to create a common Oracle query language uh, with them to embed Wolfram code or what comes from SingularityNet and to design with the stake pool operators the access layer and be able to create interfaces to be able to plug in data sources. Uh, so uh, you'll hear a lot more about this in Q1 of next year. We're even going to bring in a dedicated product manager specifically for this endeavor and task. Uh, and, uh, we were mostly in 2020 kind of talking around how to do this and bringing in partners. And we wanted to make sure we had the right people at the table. And we also wanted to see how the market itself evolved. It's been really impressive to see what Chainlink has been able to do and provide uh, and how their ecosystem has evolved. And uh, now it's gotten to the point where uh, we're in the right place to be able to build out an end-to-end -end interface. And then, of course, we'll uh, 
we try to compete within that interface and uh, we'll give lots of generic interfaces for people to uh, have their own solutions. So uh, Oracle special, very brief video. I'll make some videos on stable coins and other such things uh, at a later date, uh, but we're building out the DeFi portfolio. And our goal in 2021 is to make Cardano the best platform for a developer to develop on. Uh, and it comes with batteries included for all the hard stuff. So you can focus on the stuff that makes you rich, your actual application, your logic, and the things that are going to help you compete in the market. Thanks for listening and talk to you guys soon. Cheers.